It's not often someone can take a sport, turn it into an art. That's brilliant. Um, amazing. And then uh, such profound words as well. That's amazing. Um, we we're going to move on again. Just before we do, though, something happened to me on the way here tonight that kind of I just feel I need to bring up because we're in a, we're in a bit of a dodgy space as a country now. Everyone's talking about negativity. We're all a bit oversensitive, which is I live in a block of flats uh, in an undisclosed location. Um, <laughs> And I live with a lot of old people, and I did that on purpose because I like to be the problem neighbor. Um, and also it's nice because they come to complain about the noise. By the time they get to the door, they didn't know why they were going for a walk. So it's, it's quite useful. Um, I can feel a lot of you like saying, why doesn't he respect the elderly? Because I know you guys, you're dangerous. Um, I was raised by my grand. She was a little bit crazy. She didn't have the internet. So she just made things up. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Like, she just made up things to scare me, to keep me under control. And it was nice, you know, it was fun, but it got scary sometimes, because old people just made stuff up. If you swallow a seed, you, you'll grow a tree in your stomach. It's terrifying when you wake up with an erection. Um, um, <laughs> oh, a root, help. What did I eat? What did I eat? Think, man. Please, God, don't let it be broccoli. And, and um, so, so I, I live in this uh, block of flats, and, and I... <laughs> I mentioned I was divorced. Also live with my daughter. That's right, folks. I got custody. Um, you, you are looking at the stable one, apparently. Um, so, so, no, I really do. I, I, I've, my daughter lives with me, and, and um, she's 15 now. She's been with me for about four years. So, so when you look like me, you've got to be an excellent parent. I mean, I've got neck tattoos, right? They're social services. I've got to be a very good, you know, anyone looks at Sean, I mean, that child's not panicking, right? He's, he's obviously got a job. Try and imagine come, seeing this coming down the passage every morning. That child thinks, what's the plan? Right? <laughs> We're all going to die. So, um, so I'm a good dad. I'm quite good on discipline. I'm good on, on, on commitment. Those things are very important because I am a bit alternative. Earrings and tattoos. So I've got to be quite sort of good as a dad. Like that, that's my thing. I want to be a good dad. So, so when my daughter came to live with me, she bought her pet. Um, who's got pets here? Like one guy. Thank you so much for putting your hand up. <laughs> Thank you. You've got dogs, I can tell, just from here. Put your hand up just so everyone can see. You've got dogs, right? Yeah, you're not a cat person. What kind of dogs have you got? Jack Russell. Fantastic. Uh, what do they do, really? I mean, what, what happens when the people break in? What do they try me on? What do they, what do, they do? <laughs> it's a slipper with an attitude. Um, and and what, is your, what is your Jack Russell's name? Sorry? George and Lucy, obviously, killers. And, and, uh, and <laughs> George and Lucy, it sounds like a Parkhurst couple. And uh, <laughs> come in, I'll make you tea. Um, that's amazing. And you, and you love George and Lucy, right? Of course you do, and they love you. They've been with you for 10 years, like they had a choice. And, and uh, <laughs> they've been with me for 10 years. <laughs> This is my problem with a pet. You see, I don't see it as a pet because you didn't, you know, ask if they wanted to come live with you. You just went to someone's house, put them in a box and drove away, right? That's what you did. That's not a pet. That's a hostage. And then, and then you take them to the park and you get all weird with them. You play these weird games and dogs are a bit doff. You know, they'll, they'll run. They'll, you throw a stick. They love you. So I'll get it. I'll get it, Neville. I'll get your stick. And they grab your stick and they bring it back. And what do you do? You throw it away again. And the poor dog is so dwarfy. Okay, I'll get your stick. I'll get your stick. But like the fourth time, he's panting. You know, he's coming back a bit slower. He's like, Neville, I got your stick. But like, you know, you sure you like the stick? But you keep throwing it away. Can't I get you another stick maybe? And then he throws it again. And the dog is like, I'm not fetching that stick. You don't even like that stick. That's when the old dog next to him says, no, 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 get the stick. I didn't fetch my guy's stick. Then I fell asleep in the car and I woke up without testicles. Fetch the stick. <laughs> So, so my, my daughter doesn't have a dog. We don't have a dog. She's got a cat, which is even worse. Because cats have got no respect for human plans at all. The cat just vanishes. You said to the cat, come here, and the cat vanishes for four days. You don't know where he's been. I know where he's been, obviously, because I'm a 43-year-old man, and I know exactly where he went. He went to 217 for 50 shades of fur, but I didn't say that. I'm not going to say that to my daughter, right? So just before I came here tonight, something that really reminded me of how sensitive we are to each other in South Africa happened 
my daughter came to me tonight and said, Dad, the cat's gone. And, and, and I, I couldn't leave her there like to go to bed without the cat, right? So I said, well, let me just try and find, I'll, I'll go and look for the cat. Even if I don't find the cat, I'm making an effort. Like, that's important, right? Let me just let her know that I'm interested in her cat and I'm trying to find the cat. That's when I went, like, talking to my neighbors. And I realized, as South Africans, we talk about this idea of rainbow nation and being better people. I don't even know the person one brick away in the flat next door, right? So now I have to go and meet them for the first time, and I've got an agenda, because I need to find this cat. So I knock on the door at my next, my neighbor, and, and there's a scratching sound. And it takes a while, there's a bit of a shuffle, and then suddenly this elderly Indian lady opens the door, Mrs. Singh, but very old, very old. I didn't know if it was a lady or a tree, just... <laughs> I don't think she was coming to the door for me. I think someone knocked on her door in 1928 and she finally made it to the door. She just stood there and I thought, oh, I don't know if I should speak to her or just water her base. And um, anyway, then I made a huge mistake. I said, how have you been? Which you must never say to an old person because they'll tell you exactly how they've been since the first operation in the 50s. I got a full medical history. This got fell off. This got replaced. This doesn't work. I can't use this. I can't even feel that. This leaks. This fell off. This doesn't seal. Eventually I said, Mrs. Singh, why don't you just die? (laughs) No, I'm not being horrible. She's a Hindu lady. It's not the end for them. It's chance for an upgrade. (laughs) They do reincarnation. It's brilliant. Same contract, new handset. And so... (laughs) Because I thought I could solve a few problems in one go. You know, let's say she did pass away and she came back as a cat. I could take her home and look after her. It would work out perfectly. Anyway, she hadn't seen the cat. So then I went to the other side. There's an old Jewish guy lives next to me, an old Jewish man, lovely old guy, Mr. Cohen. He's been a bit sad because his wife passed away. So I went to ask him. He's still talking. I left him there. He's just talking about this cat. He's never seen the cat, but did it eat? Was it a lovely cat? Is it a friendly cat? Now I know why Mrs. Cohen died. It was an exit strategy. He doesn't shut up. Um, but then I was going to be late, right? I was running late. So I thought, oh my goodness, what am I going to do now? I'm running a bit late. So I've got to get here. So then I thought, hang on, before I get here, let me just run, because I live on the second floor. Let me just go to the flat underneath. Maybe the, ca- the guy underneath has seen the cat. Never been on the first floor. I don't even know who lives there, right? So I run downstairs. I knock on the door. And immediately, these two Chinese dudes answer the door. Like, on one knock. Doof, and both guys were there which is fine. I don't mind. I'm not scared of living with anyone. I've even spoken to Steve Hoffmeyer before in person. I'm not scared of anything, right? So the two Chinese dudes opened the door, and I suddenly felt so awkward. Like, what do you say? I can't, I can't be that guy that in 2016, my first words to my Chinese neighbor is, where's my cat? <laughs> so, so I just borrowed a cup of sugar and left. It was so embarrassing. It's, it, we're a unique bunch of people. We are, we are unique people in this country. It's, it's, we have our own set of issues. It's a problem. I was in a small town recently, which will remain Wellington, actually. Let's name and shame. Um, um, I wasn't actually at Wellington. I, I was at a, a rock festival. I don't know why they would ask me to host a rock festival, but there you go. And on the third day, it was a Sunday, I thought, I'm going to go to town because I'm, someone has to buy these people soap. You know, these... <laughs> musicians and hippies you can be as creative as you want but nobody has to smell like that so so i'll go get the soap not thinking that i'm dressed like earrings all black tattoos i drive into a small town in south africa on a sunday big bad idea there bad i've had, actually had afrikaans people accuse me of being a devil worshiper um, i've never worshiped the devil i had to buy her a house the judge insisted <laughs> it was a legal thing um, so, so I, I'm not for small towns. I'm not a small town. I'm a big town person where people read and have electricity. So I and shoes. So I went in to the spa uh, because, as I mentioned, I'm Greek. So anything which resembles a cafe, boom, I'm in. And and. Uh, I'm in there, right, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting the soap for these people. I thought I was on like a humanitarian mission, so I'm buying the soap, and I'm get, when it, suddenly I get this kind of feeling, this terrible feeling that someone's watching me. I don't know if anyone here scuba dives. Probably a dumb question at a Jewish function. Um, um, you guys don't scuba dive. You'd rather split an ocean than, you know, dive in to see what's going on. So, so. <laughs> Sorry, this is the only place I could ever do that joke. So, so, so. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone leaving Egypt. Oh, look at the fish. And, uh, and um, 
What a great package. This tour has got everything. <laughs> Drama, fish, and... Uh, and um, so, so sometimes when you scuba dive, this happens, right? I, I, I do scuba diving. Sometimes when you're scuba diving, you just suddenly get the worst feeling, like you're being watched, and you, you just freak out. Like you, you, the hair on the back of your neck sort of stands up, and you just sort of, it's almost like your ex-wife has sort of slipped off the boat, and she's looking for your assets because someone told her they were offshore. And, and, um, <laughs> and so, no, the, well, the theory is that that's when there's a very big shark nearby, because I don't know if you know this, but sharks run on a sort of electromagnetic situation. They sort of sense electricity. So, so when your body feels that big electrical field, you sort of panic, and often you look around, there's nothing there. You just feel, so I got this feeling in the spa, and I thought it can't be a shark. I'm in Wellington. I mean, it's the, I'm not even in the frozen fish section. <laughs> I'm in the soap section, right? So I turn around, and there it was coming at me. Uh, it was just horrifying. I think it was a lady, she had less facial hair than me, and, and rolling down the aisle, it's an Afrikaans lady wearing khaki, and you know, when Afrikaans people wear khaki, run, something's going to go bad, and so she's coming towards me, just lung arming carbohydrates into that trolley boy with anger, yeah, at this point, a lot of people say, oh, how can you make fun of fat people, because they'll never catch you, so, 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 <laughs> Anyway, she was just lung out and dragging what you might call a child, but I know the current geopolitical situation. Statistically, he's a loser. And so, coming down the aisle towards me, and she just stopped. Uh, most of her stopped. It took a while just for everything to sort of come to a complete, you know, halt, subside. And, and, and she looked at me, and I, it was the weirdest thing. I just couldn't believe this was a fellow South African. She's staring at me on a Sunday in a spa. She looks down at this little child. She says, Pete, look. Look what can happen. She's, she's pointing me out as a warning. So I just thought, you know what? I've got running shoes. I can get out of this. I said, Pete, she's right. You can evolve. Run. 